Chad. Welcome to Motor Classic. Ah, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful here. You know, back m many years ago when I was a 10-year-old boy, I sat in a cinema in a, a town called Wonthaggy watching, watching a movie called Le Mans. I, as a 10-year-old boy, I said, one day I want to go there. Now, it, it took the best part of 30 years, or 35 years actually, but it was everything and then some that I was expecting. I imagine you've heard that sort of story from a lot of people since you made this documentary. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people tell me their stories, first time going to Le Mans, what an extraordinary experience. I mean, it's, I've been to pretty much every motor race in the world and that one is just so sacred and so daunting. And it's just the history is, is fantastic. I, I, you know, uh, the Brickyard has the same kind of history, but it's different. Uh, you know, uh, uh, to me, Lasarth is probably the best circuit in the world. And, and the, the thing, atmosphere, and the atmosphere, the people. And the thing was, that movie captured that atmosphere so very well, because you know, I, I felt right, there, there were times, even you know, 35 years later, where I saw things at Le Mans that brought back memories of that movie. Right. Um, I mean, the, the Ferris wheel, even though they yes. it, and the parties in the night with the pot, I mean, it's still all yes. there. So, <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. And you saw the documentary? Yeah. Uh, haven't seen it, haven't had the chance to see it. Oh, you got to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's, must it's, it's really, a, I'm very proud of it, but uh, yeah, a lot of things, and Al Mish will tell you, I mean, there, he captured everything in that picture that needed to be captured that's part of that race, part of that weekend. When it first came out, people thought it was junk, but it's become such a, a cult classic. And, you know, I can go to Silverstone, I can go to Abu Dhabi, and there'll be some kid in a Formula Ford that can barely shave, he said, I love your dad's movie, Le Mans. So it's found a life, uh, maybe not the box office like, life that uh, they would like, the studios, but it found the audience my dad wanted to find, you know, and that was the racers. Uh, uh, so that to me uh, is, because uh, I saw how hard my dad worked on it, it's kind of a proud moment for me, you know, when people, see little kids who drive from the forest say, that's a 40 year old film and it means something to them, so that's cool. And for the time, it was such an audacious pro project that sort of only your father, someone of his stature, could get away with. I imagine going to, the, going to a Hollywood studio and saying, I want to make a movie about a 24 hour car race in France, call them on. They would have probably had no idea what he was talking about. He, he was the only sort of person who could actually get that through. And uh, do, do you think it actually got, do you think it, it, it met his vision? I mean, we look at and talk about, did, did he look back at it and say, that, that's what I wanted, it, it, that it has captured that you, you gotta, essence? You gotta you got see the documentary uh, to get the full scope, but when my dad was dying in Mexico, he showed the staff in the clinic, Le Mans. He was proud of it, and uh, it was his vision, and he fought all the way to make it his vision. And that's what's up there on screen. And ultimately, he was right, dude. I mean, uh, we're talking about 43 years later, so it made an impact. And that's all my dad gave a shit about, you know. And that's the other thing about it. If you look at, you know, the, I suppose the visual language of how you cover a, a motor race nowadays, that opening segment of, you know, just before the race starts, you know, the close-ups of the driver's boom, eyes, the, boom, boom. that that has been used by virtually every television producer, including me. <laughs> well, I, I just saw an AutoZone. I don't know if you guys have AutoZone here, which is a part short. So they ripped off the same, the heartbeat and the, you know, the cutting and so yeah, it's uh, it's uh, listen, uh, that film set a precedent the way things got made and they were doing camera mounts that had never been done before. They were doing stuff that had never been done, which are using now, you know. Uh, and nowadays you've got little GoPros that can yeah. fit in your pocket. You, These yeah. were full-sized cinema mil yeah. cameras. 35 millimeter Aries or Panavisions. And uh, Derek Bell that was here a couple of years ago, I, mean, I see him all the time, and he told me how diabolical the cars in the 917s or the Ferraris would get when you would have a lump in one corner or another. And 
I mean, these guys were, and I saw it firsthand, these guys were seriously going fast every day of the week, five days a week. And then guys like Derek and David Piper, they go to their real jobs and race during the weekend and come back on Mondays. But uh, the level of danger that they exposed themselves to was second to none, dude. I think, in a way, it was almost more dangerous than their real jobs, you know? Uh, I'm sure you've driven a lot of cars and you throw a 60 pound weight in one quarter or the other, I mean, it fucks up the whole balance. And uh, for these guys to overcome that and still do 160 through Maison Blanche with a camera on the car, I mean, kudos. Great. You met, what are your memories of the time that your father was making that? Were you sort of, were you over there at all or were you back at home? No, no I was there for the whole shoot. I, I had to go back. The shoot went over October. My mom took me back to Los Angeles so I could go to school. We had a tour, so I was there. You got to see the documentary. Yes. You, get, you get so much more info. Everything you're asking me, it spells out. So uh, for your audience, go check it out. The Man of Le Mans. It's, uh, I think you'll like it. Mm-hmm. Your own, uh, you're obviously influenced by your father's passion for motorsport because you, you took it up your, yourself. Tell us about your racing career. What have, what have you done over the years? Well, you know, I got hurt a few years ago. I hit the back wall at Daytona and was in a coma for three and a half weeks, broke my neck. I got 14 screws between two and seven. Almost lost this leg here, broke all my ribs, left arm. Uh, but besides that, I'm okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my dad, I, I started riding motorcycles when I was six years old. Started racing at nine. And I won uh, my class in the world, made a Grand Prix. So uh, there I went into go-karts and uh, later into cars. And I mean, it's all connected, you know. It's, uh, you know, I guess, if my dad was a footballer, I'd be a footballer too, you know. Or well, it's funny you mentioned football, eh? Because you you introduced we saw earlier yeah, your son, yes. and uh, and I believe he's quite the uh, quite the soccer player. He is. He's a goalie. He's had a couple of injuries here. He was in England for two years, and uh, last year was with the uh, the Galaxy offshoot, the reserves. So he's a young kid, and he's doing good. He's got the height, got the reach. He's a goalkeeper. It did. Yeah. So, At the moment, he probably pays better than most motorsport as yeah, well. Yeah, right? And, you know, he, he did a lot of go-kart racing, but when he hit puberty, he shot up, like, you know, 90 feet. So. And today's racing cars are not made for people who are six foot three or something. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, you look at a guy like Boris Set, who's 6'3", you know, they put him in race cars all the time, but if you put him in any car, he's had to be sticking above the roll bar. But... Uh, Unlike when I was growing up, I mean, if you were a Formula One driver, or, you know, everybody's in my height, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, uh, I would love to do an endurance race with my son, you know? But anyway, so after, uh, I don't... We, we can get you a drive in the Bathurst, 10, uh, Bathurst 6 hour, if you like. Oh, we, I we, lo- <laughs> what a track that is, huh? I'm, oh, yes. Fuck. I mean, and if you look back... At what Peter Brock accomplished back then, that was no easy. Uh, a good friend of mine is a guy named Patrick Long, who's a. Uh, we know, yes, know Patrick well. Uh, factory Porsche driver. Yes. And he went and did it, and he said it's fucking incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Oh. Yes, and, the tele- and television doesn't do it justice no. when you when you are actually when you are actually there when you do drive around. And no, it I've is, heard uh, that. I've it, never been there. The, per- it's extraordinary. If you can get the the twelve hour is in February is is the big thing. Um, so, yeah, if you can How get that How far is that from here? Oh, that's, um, you, you, can dri- you can drive it in about 10 if you don't worry too much about the speed limits. What about flying? Fly, um, you, you fly into Sydney and then it's about two and a half hours west of Sydney. Okay. Yes. I'd love to see that here. It's just incredible. And a lot, a lot of the uh, Porsche factory drivers will be racing. We spoke with Porsche Cars Australia on the show just uh, about a week ago, and they announced that they will be having uh, um, people like Earl Bamber and Nick Tandy. Those guys will be coming over for that, that race. Huge, huge race, about four to 55 GT3 cars. Betcha. So, uh, yeah. so Porsche is going to make a mark here? Yes, certainly, along with factory teams from Bentley, uh, Boy, Ferrari, I got huge. Audi, Bentley, yep. everybody. Everybody. It's amazing in IMSA and also WC that GT class with all the manufacturers really, really exploding, isn't it? Yes. 
sports cars are going through the most incredible re revival. I, 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 I got to say, the WEC and IMSA and those things, to me, way better than Formula One is now. You, you know? won't get you won't get much of an argument from me on right? that point. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I'm friends with Mark Webber, and the things he tells me about the 919 is just fucking incredible. Just you incredible. Know, just, yeah. You know, who would have thought? You know, yes, I, I, I'm, 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 the, the incredible, incredible cars. Before we let you, uh, before we let you go, I must ask you: with in making the process of making the the documentary. What did you What did you learn about your father that perhaps you you didn't know before? Nothing. 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 Yeah. I knew everything, <laughs> and I thought it was a story that needed to be told. Um, you know, and we we didn't hide anything. It couldn't have been easy for my mom to watch for the first time with my dad's womanizing and stuff that was going on then. But yeah, and back to your other question. You, you, so no, there was nothing I didn't know, <laughs> and I wanted to bring that to light so people. And you tell me after you see the documentary, <laughs> if there wasn't things in there you didn't know happened during the filming of Le Mans. But uh, uh, back to your other question that you asked me about 20 minutes ago. At that point in my dad's career, my dad could have gone to any studio in Hollywood and say, I, I want to produce a phone book. They would have said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice to have that stroke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was good to watch, yeah. So, you know, it's amazing he kept that, even though Le Mans was a disaster, it didn't diminish his work at all. I mean, his career went on even stronger. Yeah. So, uh, do me a favor, watch the documentary. Do you need me to get you a copy, or do you got one? We, we, would, love, we would love a copy. That's, I think you that's have a card? The pro I think it's probably, I will, I will get, we will get you Give a copy. Give me a card, I'll send you a copy. Blue-ray Blu or regular? I would be happy. Blu-ray would be lovely. Anything is friends. We'd love to. We'd love Make to. Make sure I get a call. We'd love to see. All right, Chad. Thanks for joining All us right, in Pit Line. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Thank you.